Hey everybody again and welcome to part 2 of my 2014 core set booster box opening. So let's dive right in. So yeah, if you guys caught the last one, the main cards I pulled were Mutavault and uh... Actually I think Mutavault was the only... No, yeah and Gale Rider. But yeah, we didn't really pull too many amazing cards out of it, but... We pulled more than half our foils. So we have Illusionary Armor, Enlarge, Water Servant, and our rare is a Johnny Collar of the Pride. Sweet, that's actually the Planeswalker I wanted, because I'm trying to make a white deck, and I need him. So he's a 3 cost, 4 loyalty Planeswalker, put a, uh, plus 1, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to 1 target creature, minus 3 target creature gains flying and double strike until the end of the turn. And minus uh, eight, put X two two white cat creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is your life total. See, yeah, life total. Oh man, that is beautiful. If only he was foil though. He's only like five bucks now because he's not really being used. Which is really surprising because there's a lot of good white cards in this set. But maybe he'll go up in price again once um, Theros comes out. But I'm really hoping, you know, I see some more play. Bubbling Cauldron, Vampire Warlord, Brave the Elements, and our rare is the Colossal Whale. So it's a 7 cost whale, that's a 5-5 five five Island Walk, and whenever Colossal Whale attacks, you may exile target creature defending player controls until Colossus Whale leaves the battlefield. So he's like the Storm Tide Leviathan of this set. Still no young Pyromancers, I know these are pretty rare and common. And he's pretty expensive too. Entire playsets uh, on websites seem to sell for ten bucks. So I don't know how much he actually goes for if you buy him separately. I haven't checked, but we have gnawing zombie, my favorite zombie. Wall of swords, young pyromancer. There he is. I don't really like him, but kind of ugly. And our rare is. Uh, into the Wild, so it's a 4 cost enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield. Pretty good green card, too. So, we usually get about 4 mythics in a box, but I've seen M14 be real generous and give people lots of mythics, so I'm really hoping for a Garak or an Archangel of Thune. At least one of them for the loss, and not for the money-wise, but because... I want them for a deck. Uh, we have Shimmering Grotto, Spell Blast, Stonehorn Chanter, and the rare is uh, Guardian of the Ages. So a 7 cost, 7-7 seven, seven artifact golem with Defender, and when a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, if Guardian of the Ages had Defender, it loses Defender and gains Trample. And I think we have a foil. Elixir of Immortality. So it's an artifact pack. Garden of the Ages isn't too good of a card. Well, at least we haven't gotten any doubles yet. If I do get doubles, at least a Johnny. So let's see here. What else do we have? We have oh, another Chandra card. Flames of the Firebrand. Tenacious Dead, another good uncommon. Windstorm. Hmm. <laughs> And our rare is Dismiss into Dream. Uh, it's a 7 cost. Each creature your opponent control is an illusion in addition to its other types. And has when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. And we have a rare clone foil. Wow. That's going to be our rare foil for this box. It's already disappointing. This is like the, one of the cheapest rares. It's a 4 cost, 0, zero shapeshifter. And you may have it into the battlefield as any creature. But yeah, the illusion, I mean the dream card, it's good because it turns all your opponents into illusions. Without Lord of the Unreal, they're kind of useless. And they'll die. As long as you activate a card that targets them. Even if it would power them up, they're still going to be destroyed. So I'm really hoping our last mythic is something good. So we have another Tenacious Dead, Bramble Crush, Battle Sliver, and our rare is Sanguine Bond, which is actually a really good card. 
went down in price a lot since this was released, but it's a 5 cost. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. I was doing a black uh, life gain deck in it. It worked good. It is better if you put white into it, but then white slows it down because then you have two land color, uh, two colors to deal with instead of one. And it just, it's not that good. So another Vampire Warlord, which is actually a really bad, um, uncommon, but we have Sarah Angel, Staff of the Mind Matches, and our rare is Bone Scythe Sliver. Sweet, so the second best, uh, Sliver is a 4 cost Sliver with a 2 2, and Sliver creatures you can draw double strike. This with the uh, Gale Rider one is really beast. But most people only choose two colors and they usually choose white and blue just because you get Bone Scythe and you get Gale Rider. But there are some that do five. And I, uh, proud of those guys who do. Staff of the Flame Matches. Actually, no, we didn't pull this one yet, I don't think. Blightcaster. He's pretty sweet. Staff of the Sun Matches. And a rare is... Traumatized, so it's 5 cost for a sorcery. Target a player puts the top half of his or her library rounded down into his or her graveyard. Great for any uh, mill deck. Great card. Oh, I still have 4 packs for this. I could have sworn that was like 2, but. Hmm, we got a mall horn. I have no clue what that is, but all I know is it wasn't on the top of uh, any decks, so it's not going to be any good. Shimmering Grotto, Steel Farm Sliver, Howl of the Night Pack, and our rare is Jace's Mind Seeker. So it's a 6 cost fish illusion with 4 farm flying, and when Jace's Mind Seeker enters the battlefield, target opponent puts the top 5 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. You may cast an instant or sorcery among them without paying its mana cost. Not a bad card. One of the intro pack cards, and actually I think it's the only intro pack card we actually pulled so far. We have pulled Liliana's Reaver, Johnny's Chosen, Chandra's Phoenix, or whatever the other one is. I really wish they'd start making artifact decks too, so there'd be like six. But So we have another Colonian Tusker, Millstone, Milling, and Large. And we have a Thorncaster Sliver. So it's a 5 cost for a 2-2 two, two Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have whenever this creature attacks, it deals 1 damage to target creature or player. The Burn Sliver. Which is actually really good, and he's also the one that had the play mat. Bone Scythe should have got it, but... Oh well. You can tell when there's a foil in these packs, because the packs feel almost thicker. Like, not the pack itself, but the, uh, the cards. So we have Banisher Priest, uh, Woodborn Behemoth, Angelic Accord. There's the white card that goes with the black deck I was running. We have Stryonic Resonator. And it's an artifact that's two costs and two in tap. Copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for that copy. Hmm. Didn't seem too good. And our last pack... Time ebb. Eh, yeah, Brindlebar, you came back after M12. Same with Pillar Field Ox. Mana Weft Sliver. I think it actually looks pretty cool, but it doesn't look like a sliver. Staff of Death Magus, Angelic Accord, and our rare is Megantic Sliver. The 3 3 Titanic Sliver for 6. That gives 3 3 and is 3 3. Really good sliver, and a Foil Forest. So this half of the box was pretty good because we had a Johnny, but other than that, it wasn't that good. So, stay tuned for part three. We still have one more mythic to find. Will we actually get this thune like everyone else seems to be getting? Stay tuned.